When it comes to the Gorsei, Venus Duro always had the hype. Of course, he's a swordsman, looks like he's from Wano. It makes sense. Then, of course, you also had Egghead who highlighted Saturn, whose aura was always there when looking back on his perception in the series. Recently, I personally have been a fan of Mercury after his tanking of two of Luffy's attacks. This is a Yonker, for goodness sake. And the fact that he didn't take no damage. And then also, I gotta talk about his Conquer Saki Roar. That was super cool. And the fact that Mars had Jinbei shook. Like, let's be honest here. All these Gorsei are doing relatively well when it comes to perception. But I have to admit, guys, I really don't care about the character Jupiter, who's named after the biggest planet in the solar system. Isn't that coincidence? And is famous for his Sanji father theory way back in the days. If you guys were in the YouTube community back in the days when it comes to the One Piece community. So I don't know what you guys are thinking. Like, you're probably thinking why I made this video solely on this Gorosei when I don't care about him. Well, that's the whole point. Because I think Oda is purposely wanting us not to care about him. I know you're probably more confused. Well, let me explain thoroughly in this video what I'm talking about. Now, the first time we see Jupiter actually speaking in the One Piece story, it's around 200 chapters into the story. And he talks about how destruction of the three great powers would reverber reverberate around the world. They must be protected. But you have to understand, the three great powers is a very recent concept. The warlord system is a very recent concept. Even the Yonko system is a very recent concept. So it's really interesting how he's talking about how the destruction of the three great powers would reverber reverberate around the world. Makes me think, how long have you been a Gorsei, brother? Like, just look at Jupiter. He's the only one who doesn't have gray hair or bald. He has blonde hair. He literally looks the youngest in, of course, the Gorsei group. Now, of course, the next time we actually see the Gorsei in full-fledged, is around 300 chapters in the story, we actually don't even see Jupiter. That's the funny part. We don't even see him. Like, he's not even, like, we don't even see him. And you probably think I'm joking. I'm literally showing you guys the panel. Like, we don't see Jupiter. Then I gotta talk about how Jupiter was sweating when Shanks and Whitebeard met. Yeah, it makes sense. Of course, like, if he is a recent Gorosei, he grew up with Whitebeard dominating, of course, with the world's greatest man, strongest man. And, of course, Shanks is a monster in his own right. But the other Gorosei probably grew up with Joy Boy dominating. Yes, you guys all know where I'm going with this. Then, of course, we gotta talk about after Marine Ford War, he was the last one to talk. Now, you're probably thinking there's so many times wherever the Gorseys were the last ones to talk, but I want to see how, when he's the last one to talk, he also says, let's wait to see how the new world responds. Like, and he says, only select individuals with great influence when it comes to, of course, upgrading the world art system. So, he seems to be one of the more Gorseys who are, very focused on the current climate of the One Piece story. He even says if anybody can stop Blackbeard, it has to be the other Yonko or Marco the Phoenix. Uh, and you have to understand, this time he's the second last to speak. And the only reason why he's not last is because it gets overshadowed by Venus Duro speaking of the Will of D. No Diddy. Now, of course, the next time we see the Gorsei in a very pivotal moment is, of course, post time skip. And of course, Saturn, Mercury, Venus, they're all shit talking to Kaino, yo, telling Kaino pretty much that, like, to know who you're talking to. But Jupiter just says, uh, it's in Cypher Fall's hands. Like, he doesn't shit talk a Kaino. Now, of course, I'm not saying that the fact, because we know Mars didn't shit talk a Kaino too, but the fact that those three did and Jupiter just talks about Cypher Fall. Makes me think, maybe this Gorosei can't really talk, look down on Akainu like that because he's from the same era as Akainu, if you get what I mean a little bit. Plus, he has the same vein-popping reaction like Akainu has. Like, I'm just thinking this guy is not from the Void Century like the other Gorosei. You guys all know what I believe. I believe the Gorosei are from the Void Century. This guy doesn't look like it. Then let's talk about how Saturn, Mercury, Venus address Shanks. And Mars, of course, is facing Shanks. But then Jupiter has his back to Shanks in this moment. This guy was probably, I'm telling you guys right now, a holy knight before he joined the Gorosei. And maybe even has beef with Shanks' father, Figalan Garling, the Kapita back in the days. I'm not too sure, because we know Figalan Garling looks to be one of the most legendary holy knights. But the fact that he has his back towards Shanks makes me think there's something petty going on when it comes to, you know, we all know the theory of Shanks, of course, being a celestial dragon. Then, of course, when, of course, we're seeing the Gorsei being highlighted again, every Gorsei is talking except Jupiter again. Like, he just looks like he's, like, he's, like, 
the little bro of the group, if you get what I mean. And then we see this guy saying, oh, great Emu. Man, is this guy glazing Emu? Like, this guy didn't rise up with the other Gorsei. Like, he did like, I feel like the other Gorsei rose up with Emu and started from the bottom. And this guy looks like he just got put into that Gorsei position and now is saying, oh, great Emu. Like, he wasn't there. He wasn't there during the Void Sentry. You weren't there shooting in the gym with them. Uh, maybe I'm going too far with this theory, but you guys, I want you guys to really understand where I'm going with this. Now, of course, we see that Jupiter yells at Mercury. This is the first time where we see this guy actually standing up for himself, standing on business. He's yelling at Mercury, asking why we, the world government gave the Nika Delafruit a different name. And he says it, and of course, it replies to erase that fruit's name from the annals of history. This is the final proof that this dude is a new Gorsi, because the other Gorsi are not questioning the tactics of hiding the name of the fruit and everything. If anything, they explain it later on. So I think this guy never even saw the Nika fruit ever be used, but the other Gorsi did. Like you see when Saturn saw Luffy naked on, he's like, Nika? Like, I'm telling you guys right now. There's something off about Jupiter. And of all people, who's the one that explains Gear 5th and says it's the most ridiculous power in the world? Even the anime confirmed it was Jupiter explaining it. This guy's a new ass Gorsei. Like, how many times does Oda has to show us? I need, another funny moment is after Wano, he gets corrected, of course, uh, by which, in my opinion, is the leader of the Gorsei group in Mercury, which is a whole nother video for whole nother day. Workery, Workry, whatever you want to call him. When, of course, that Jupiter says that Sabo is unlucky and Mercury says, nah, it's just fate. Like, how are you going to get a little bro like the leader of the Gorosei, in my opinion? Well, not leader, but he so, so, so far has seemed to be the strongest Gorosei. The what he's doing with the Luffy in the fight. I'll talk about that in another video. I don't want to talk about too much in this Jupiter video. Like, even even Jupiter's own video, I'm talking about other Gorosei. Like, this guy is little bro. He's not valid. Okay, I must admit. The only Gorsei that Oda highlights to send Sabo before he actually attacks the Gorsei, I gotta give him some credit. It was Jupiter. So I'll say this. I'm not saying Osvashin Osvash Haki is better than the other Gorsei, but I'll say that Oda did show him sensing Sabo, so I gotta respect it. But that only helps my theory better because we know that when you get older in age, your hockey gets lower. So maybe other Gorsei are just so old that their hockey is not as like refined in a sense but i still think they're i still think the other Gorsei are stronger if i'm being honest then of course we see the silhouette of the Gorsei. this is before we actually see their designs and it, if i'm telling you guys right now like i'm telling you guys right now if that big silhouette is emu or is not emu then jupiter looked the most badass when it comes to the silhouette but the next page we see it look like the most trash silhouette when it comes to Jupiter's actual silhouette. So I'm a little confused with the whole silhouette situation over here in this chapter. I think it was chapter 1085, but I have to give my thoughts on it still. And then this guy has the nerve to ask Imu, why do you choose Lelouchia when it comes to Imu destroying that island? And the other Gorsi just assume why, because they know Imu. I told you, they're from the court for century. This guy isn't. But Imu says, of course, because uh, it's the closest island. Like, that's just a badass answer. And funny as well and then he has the nerve to say this is gonna end the ancient battle yeah for you it's ancient because you are a new gorse and his job is the leader of agriculture or like this, this, i think they called the god of agriculture which like i'm telling you right now that was the most lamest title that they had other gorse had way more hype titles what a boring role and then of course when we see the gorse's designs in their mythical zones or whatever you guys think it is is are they actually these mythical creatures all these epic forms and homeboy is a sad worm like, like come on bro like now Oda's just trolling now Oda's trolling for sure like the first thing he does in the battle is go underground and luffy says it's an earthworm so like <laughs> i'm telling you guys right now yo jupiter is not being taken serious as of now then of course later on we see jupiter actually swallow up luffy no diddy I will say at least he did something. At least he attacked Luffy. I'll give him that. Like the other, of all the Gorses, he was the first one to attack Luffy. So you could say that it could show naiveness, but we'll see. Of course, the Elbaf legendary pirates and Dory and Bragi had to cut up Jupiter to save Luffy, which is not. I'm not gonna really, really cut. I'm not gonna give him some slack because we know the Gorse can, of course, regenerate. So I'll, I'll allow him there. Later on, we also, of course see Jupiter is sucking the air. So Luffy, Dory, and Brocky can't move. They're getting sucked in. And Luffy had to kick an entire building just to stop Jupiter's sucky, sucky, no me power. No Diddy for sure. This is a no Diddy moment of all time. 
Let's just talk about it, guys. If I'm being honest, he's the least impressive Gorese to me. But that's okay because he seems different than the others. Probably a legendary god knight, if you want to call it, or holy knight, like Figaland Garling. Promoted after probably maybe the God Valley incident because we know Saturn was there. So those, we can only assume that the other original Goroseis were there, including an original Jupiter. I'll tell you guys now, if the original Gorosei was killed by rocks roger or garp or one one of those three if one of those three killed but i think rocks making the why they want to hide his name and then this new one had to replace it i'm telling you guys right now that would be super hype but that's my thoughts on jupiter now of course my next gorse video is gonna be on mercury which is gonna be way more hype this one was kind of like i was trying to really just show you guys how this guy really isn't that valid <laughs> so yeah, if you're a jupiter fan i apologize but yeah